So this video is for chapter 8. I'm going to give you an introduction to trigonometry, or at least right triangle trigonometry. So we probably know this is a right triangle, because this angle over here is 90 degrees, and we label it with this little square. So what do we know so far about right triangles, at least from this year in math? We used Pythagorean's theorem to say that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So if I knew two of these values, a, b, and c, I could figure out the third using this formula. We also did quite a few problems that where we had to recognize that the interior sum of a triangle is 180, which means if we know one angle, we can actually take 90 minus to figure out the other. And this works because 90 is over here, so it's really like 180 minus 90, and we can kind of skip that step. We looked at special right triangles like the 45, 45, 90. That is the degrees are 45, 45, and 90. So this was an isosceles triangle. The two legs were the same. And the hypotenuse was whatever x was multiplied by the square root of 2. There's always this ratio between the two. We also looked at another special right triangle called a 30, 60, 90 triangle, named for the measure of the angles. And whichever side was across from 30, if that was x, the hypotenuse was 2 times that, and the other leg was root 3 times that value. What we're going to do here in chapter 8 is look at a right triangle where we might know some information, like one side length and one angle, and we'll be able to figure out the other side lengths. Or we'll be able to figure out angles from side lengths only. Using everything else we've learned so far in math, these feats are impossible. But using trigonometric ratios, we can resolve them. Plus, I mean, it's just kind of fun to say trigonometric ratios, and it certainly makes you feel smart. But if you consider the root words in trigonometric or trigonometry, it's just measuring triangles. That's what we're doing here. So first, I think we should go back and think about a circle and define a couple things. So here I have a coordinate grid, and starting here at the middle, I headed to one in every direction. So if this is my center, that means that my radius is going to be equal to one. The radius being the distance from the center to any point on the outside of the circle. Also worth considering is something called the diameter. That's the distance from one side of the circle all the way across to the other. So you can see how it's pretty much the radius times two. So then there's the circumference. If I start at one area of my circle and I travel all the way around it and I get back to where I started, that's the circumference. Formulas for this include two pi r or pi times diameter. So it turns out that is the definition of pi. It's a ratio. It's a ratio between the distance around the circle and the distance across the circle. That's what, where we get 3.14159 and so on and so forth. So if we visualize that, if this green bar is the diameter, well, we can measure there's one diameter, there's two diameters, there's three diameters, and then a little bit extra, a 0.14159 of, of another diameter. And that's where we get pi, adding these up. Primarily in this chapter, we're going to be dealing with degrees. And if you think about degrees in a circle, you might know there's 360 of them. If you travel this far, you've hit 90 degrees. If you kept going all the way over to here, that would be 180 degrees. And if you went all the way around the circle, that would be 360 degrees. These are the numbers we're going to use when we solve and use trigonometric ratios, the degrees. However, when we are doing trigonometry, we tend to use radians as well, which is a different type of unit than degrees. Here's where it comes from. So this blue line is the radius of a circle. But how many of these blue lines could I fit around a circle? Well, it turns out if I wanted to get halfway, I could do one, two, three of them, and then a little bit extra. And if I wanted to keep going, I could do one, two, three of them, and then a little bit extra. Let's just focus on the top here. So if I make a little triangle here, this has one times the radius to get from here to the outside edge of the circle. This is one radius to get from here to there. And this distance along the outside edge is also one radius. So this slice of the pie, all the dimensions are one radius. This whole thing is called one radian. And if you want to know exactly how many radians fit around this entire circle, the answer is 2 pi. Or pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. So when you're using these trigonometric ratios, 
we have to go to the mode and make sure that we are in degree mode. And then we can get out answers like 90 degrees for this spot right here. Otherwise, it'll give us an answer in terms of how many radiuses we are around a circle. So let's think about a right triangle. Nice, some nice even round numbers like 3, 4, and 5. And if I'm looking at this angle over here in the corner, 5 is going to be considered the length of the hypotenuse, 4 is the length of the opposite leg, and 3 is the length of the adjacent leg. So in this case, adjacent means right next to, and opposite means across from. But what if I change my angle and suddenly I'm looking at this angle? This is the one that is given that I know. 5 is still the hypotenuse, but now 3 represents the length of the opposite side, and 4 would represent the length of the adjacent side. So these are some important vocabulary terms. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle, and the opposite or adjacent leg depends on which angle we're referring to. The adjacent one is the one right next to it, and the opposite is across from. Or if we're looking at the other angle, it kind of switches. So we use this mnemonic device, SOKATOA. And what that means is that the sine of a given angle, and this is the Greek, Greek symbol for theta, is equal to the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse side length. Or the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse side length. The tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. And if you are paying attention, OH matters because that tells you which goes on top and which goes on bottom and which side length we're using, adjacent hypotenuse or opposite and adjacent, and it kind of tells you which shortcut to use too. So let's call this angle over here X. The sine of this angle X is equal to the opposite leg's length divided by the hypotenuse's length. So here, 3 over 5. And you can see how it's a ratio of 3 to 5. Same thing with cosine. We use adjacent side length over hypotenuse length. And it's also a ratio. Same thing with tangent. In this one, we use opposite over adjacent, which means 3 over 4 relative to x. So if we look at a triangle like this, it's a right triangle. We know one of the legs is 9. And we know that the hypotenuse is marked x. And we know that this angle down here is 42 degrees. So relative to 42, 9 would be considered the adjacent side because it's right next to it, and x is the hypotenuse. So if we go back to Sokotoa, we have an h and we have an a. Do any of these shortcuts use a and h? The middle one does. So I'm going to use cosine. And this tells me that the cosine of 42 is equal to 9 over x. So if I flip that around a little bit, x is equal to 9 divided by cosine 42. And I can figure out that this distance, x, is actually 12.1. And I can figure that out based upon the ratio that these two sides should have considering this angle is 42 degrees and this is a 90 degree angle. Cosine of 42 by itself, if you enter into the calculator, you get this. Notice if we multiply that scale factor times our hypotenuse, we get our leg. That this side is this proportion of this side. That's why they're called trigonometric ratios. We can use a similar idea if we know some of the side lengths and we want to find the angle. For example, what angle can we plug into one of these ratios so it spits out 8 to 10 as our ratio? And also we have to figure out which one should we use, sine, cosine, or tangent. So if we think about relative to x degrees, 10 is adjacent and 8 is opposite. So I might run through my shortcuts and see which one of these three shortcuts involves opposite and adjacent. This one over here. So if tan x is equal to 8 over 10, we can use the tangent inverse function of our calculator. That's pressing the blue second button first before you hit tangent, and then you'll see this little negative 1. And then this fraction 8 out of 10 goes inside the parentheses, and whatever we get is our angle. It turns out this angle is 38.7 degrees. And if you take the tangent, of 38.7, you get 0 0.8. Notice the ratio. 10 times 0.8 gives you this. It's the ratio between the two. So if we go back to Sokotoa, here's a couple problems where we start with 
one angle and one side length, and we try to figure out the other side length. Relative to that angle, we're looking at an adjacent side and a hypotenuse side. That's how we know we're going to use cosine, because cosine involves adjacent and hypotenuse. So we can say the cosine of 51 is equal to x over 8, multiply both sides by 8, and plug this into our calculator to get our answer that x must be 5 when you round it. Or similarly, over here, if we're looking at 56, x is the opposite, where 9 is the hypotenuse. So that tells me we're going to use sine. Sine of 56 is equal to x over 9. I multiply both sides by 9, plug that into the calculator. If I rounded the nearest tenth, I get 7.5. In both of these cases, when I'm finding a side length, I'm going to use cosine and sine or tangent. Not the inverse functions, but the base functions. Compare that with an example like this one, where I'm trying to find angle P. Here I'm given two side lengths, the opposite and adjacent side lengths relative to P, so I know I'm going to use tangent. But I'm going to take the inverse tangent of 12 over 20 because I'm trying to find an angle. That's when you use inverse tangent to find angles. Then, of course, things get a little bit trickier because we're asked to solve right triangles, which means figure out all of the missing angles and all of the missing side lengths. Here's an example. If I start with solving this angle, I can take 90 minus the known 61, and I get 29 degrees. Two things left to solve, the hypotenuse and the other leg. If I go back to Sokotoa, I can use two different formulas here because they both involve an H. And if I want to figure out H, my hypotenuse, either one of these would work. For sine, I need to be looking at 29 degrees because the O has to be the opposite angle. So if I'm starting here, 21 is opposite 29 degrees. Or if I'm starting here at 61, then I can do adjacent over hypotenuse. So 21 over h works. So it turns out that both of these, 21 divided by sine 29 or 21 divided by co 61, are the same. Both of them, if I round to the nearest tenth, give me 43.3. So going back to Sokotoa, if I want to figure out L, this missing leg, I could use any one of these formulas, really, depending on where I set it up and which angle I used. But personally, I'd prefer to use the 21, which is a solid round number, than the 43.3, which is something that I rounded. So if I want to use 21 in L, I'm going to have to use tangent. So which angle do I use? Should I say that the tangent of 61 degrees is L over 21? Or should I say that the tangent of 29 degrees is 21 over L? Turns out both are right, and both give you the same answer. Both tell you that this length is 37.9. So now I have solved the right triangle because I have found all of the missing side lengths and the missing angle. There's different pathways you can take to find your answer, so long as you are following the basic rules and using these three shortcuts properly. They tell you the ratio of one side length to another, and that helps you figure out specific angles or specific side lengths, depending on what is given.